Hi everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and today we are out here taking a look at the all-new 2016 Scion IA. Now, if this looks very familiar to you if you're viewing this in a country other than the United States, that's because this is very closely related to the Mazda 2. Design partnerships are not new for Toyota or for Scion. In fact, right now on dealer lots, you will find the Scion FRS, which is also the Subaru BRZ and Toyota 86. That vehicle was co-developed between Toyota and Subaru, with Subaru taking the lead in a large portion of the design. This vehicle is based off of the Mazda 2, again with Mazda taking the majority of the lead on the design. They then tweaked a few things for the North American market and are selling it here as a Scion. Toyota has been working at making their designs a little bit more dramatic and some might say a little bit more polarizing lately. That's definitely going on on the front of the Scion i8. This looks very different than the Mazda 2 that you'll find in other international markets. It kind of reminds me of sort of an Angry Bird character. We have this large grille opening right here, which is attractive actually in my eye, I have to say. Some people have said they don't like this design. It looks too much like a large fish mouth trying to scoop them up. But I actually think this design direction is a good thing for the Scion brand. An interesting touch up front is this collision warning system. It operates very similarly to the city safety system that we find in Volvos, considerably more expensive than this. It is a Mazda derived system and it functions between approximately 2 and about 20 miles an hour or so. The system will attempt to take the vehicle to a complete stop if it can or at least mitigate the damage. The primary goal of the system is to reduce impact speed. So while it may stop you in certain circumstances, the primary benefit is to reduce the impact. So if you're in a city situation, it'll mean that difference between a very minor fender bender or a major fender bender. No, your eyes are not deceiving you. For 2016, the IA is a sedan only. In terms of overall size, this is about a foot shorter than your average compact sedan in the United States. So this is a decent amount smaller than the Toyota Corolla, the Honda Civic, etc. Being a small sedan, we do have a tiny trunk lid back here, and these 16-inch alloy wheels are standard. That's because there are really only two choices to make when you buy any Scion sold in the United States. You choose the transmission, and then you choose the color, and that's it. Everything else is standard. If you want options that are not available on the vehicle, they may be available through your dealer as an aftermarket purchase. The sort of Angry Birds theme continues out back with these tail lamps that slant downwards as they go inwards, and the Mazda influence is a little bit more visible right back here than it is up front. Although I don't find the overall design quite as attractive as the European Mazda 2 or the current generation North America Ford Fiesta, I do think it's very attractive. It also works very well together. I was a little bit concerned about seeing it in pictures up front, uh, but in person it actually does look a little bit better in terms of that front end. Under the hood, we find a very unique drivetrain designed by Mazda. This is their 1.5 liter four cylinder engine. It produces just over 100 horsepower and just over 100 pound feet of torque. Now, that may not sound like a lot of power, but the Scion IA only weighs about 2,400 pounds, so it is a decent amount of power for something this light. Unlike the Scion IM or Toyota's own Yaris, we use different transmissions under this hood. It uses either a six speed short throw manual transmission or a six speed automatic transmission. And that six-speed automatic is also a Mazda design, which means it engages its torque converter very, very early and makes it feel a little bit more like a dual clutch or DSG transmission. Fuel economy is exceptionally high in this model. I'll let you refer to the chart on the side of your screen. The important thing to know is that the manual transmission actually gets lower fuel economy than the automatic, so it may be worth that $1,100 if you plan on keeping your car a long time. Front seat comfort is good for this segment. We have a tilt telescopic steering column with a decent range of motion, and we have a multi-way manual adjustable seat. One nice touch for taller drivers is that the seat does move further back in its tracks than you might otherwise expect, although your elbow may bang on the B-pillar. With the front seat adjusted for me at six feet tall, I do have a reasonable amount of room sitting behind myself. You will notice that the seat bottom cushion is a little bit close to the floor. That will make it more comfortable for children than adults, but I do have about an inch of legroom left right there. I also have adequate headroom. I can actually lean my head all the way back in the seat on the headrest, and my hair is brushing the ceiling, but my head is not touching the ceiling. The headrest does scoot down quite far to improve rearward visibility. When it's up in its most upright position, it does block the driver's view a little bit. Now, scooting to the middle seat, my head does touch the ceiling. My head does not touch the headrest, and you will notice that the rear bench seat is not as wide as you'll find in the next size category up. That's just a simple fact of life when it comes to vehicles this size. AD and cargo practicality, the rear seat backs do fold. They don't fold flat with the cargo area. They are a little bit of a jump, but that does improve the cargo carrying ability of the IA. Speaking of cargo carrying, you will find a surprising amount of cargo space in the IA. This is just over 13 cubic feet, which is actually about what you'll find in the Toyota Corolla 
even though this is a little bit smaller. Now we don't have any helper handles on the trunk lid to help close it, and the rear seat back releases are here in the trunk only. So I'm going to have to give this 7 out of 10 points when it comes to my exclusive trunk comfort index. Again, as we take a look around the IA, remember this only comes in one configuration. That means that we do get height adjustable seat belts and two-way adjustable front headrests and fabric seats in all models. The front doors are a combination of hard touch plastics, fabric, and soft touch plastics right there for that armrest. We'll also find a bottle holder and some speakers down there low. Hard touch plastics are not unusual in this segment, and you will find things like a hard touch upper dashboard, but you'll also find some unusual things like a soft touch stitched portion right here, right above the glove box. The glove box is a reasonably sized glove box as well. You'll see that we do have a decent amount of storage space in there, instruction manual, etc. Nestled in the dashboard, you'll notice something very different than the other Toyota or Scion models, and that is we have a 7-inch color touchscreen LCD mounted onto the dashboard, sort of like an iPad grafted onto the dashboard. Now, this is a color touchscreen LCD, and it operates essentially the same way as the Mazda system in the current generation Mazda 3, also the new Mazda 6 and CX-5. If you want to know more about this particular system, you can go ahead and check out that video. There's a link down there at the bottom of your screen. It operates essentially the same, although this is the latest version of the software, so it does have a few more of the kinks worked out that we noticed in that first generation of this particular system. This makes this very different than every other entry in the segment because, again, this is standard in all models. Now, the optional navigation software can be purchased from the dealer after you purchase the vehicle, but everything else that you see in the system is bundled with the IA in all configurations. Below that screen, we have a round air vent for the driver, a square one for the passenger, hazard light, single zone manual climate control and then working our way lower from that we have the SD card slot for the built-in navigation software and we also have two USB inputs I have my iPhone 6 connected right there and 12 volt power outlet we also have a decent amount of storage space right there but it's not covered all models of the XA come standard with keyless go so that's what the key looks like and you'll find the start stop button right over here behind the windshield wiper stock our particular tester is the six-speed manual transmission version and reverse is all the way to the left and then up not all the way to the right and then down like you'll find in some behind the shifters where we find the control knob for that infotainment system obviously the nav will only work if you have the nav software we have a home button media button favorite button back button this is power and volume and then this control stick toggles side to side up to down rotates around and then selects to enter behind that we have two large cup holders and no center armrest there isn't one attached to the seat and there isn't one integrated into the console these cup holders also don't have a roller cover. Behind that, you will find a very small additional storage cubby right there at the bottom of your screen. I apologize because it is hard to see these screens in strong sunlight, and I really don't have much time with this vehicle at this launch event, but we do have a large central speedometer. On the right side of the speedometer, we have things like our trip computer as well as our fuel gauge. On the left side, you'll find the trip odometer as well as the tachometer and a gear position indicator. Moving out to the steering wheel, this is a urethane steering wheel. It's not leather wrapped like you'll find in the Scion IM, but we do have a lot of direct access buttons here on either side. Volume up, down, the info button is for that trip computer, track forward, backward, voice command button, dedicated phone hang up and pick up buttons, and then our cruise control buttons on the right side. Cruise control is also standard in all models of the IA. The first thing you'll notice about the IA really is how light it is, and that affects the acceleration as well as the braking. Now, since I've only been driving this at this launch event, I haven't had the opportunity to zero to 60 test it like I normally do, but I expect this is probably going to be kind of Prius-like when it comes to acceleration. Now, the power comes in just over 100 horsepower, but this only weighs about 2,400 pounds, and that does improve acceleration as well as braking. The braking feel is very confident, and stopping distances seem very short for this kind of vehicle. This definitely has a more confident feel than most versions of the Ford Fiesta, definitely than most versions of the Nissan Versa. Now, the Nissan Versa is a car that I like because it is a very inexpensive vehicle, but I have to admit that this is a better value than the Versa, and it definitely feels better out on the road. Chevy Sonic has also been a very dynamic option in this segment. I have to rank this one notch above the Sonic as well. As with any vehicle that has a relatively short wheelbase and is relatively light and inexpensive, you will notice that the handling, cabin noise, those sorts of things will be a notch above the next category up. So something like a Toyota Corolla or a Honda Civic, they're going to be a little bit quieter in the cabin. They're also going to give you a slightly more composed ride. Now this ride is definitely tuned towards the sportier side of things, which is a little bit surprising, although it's not harsh by any stretch of the imagination. So it is still a car that you could commute to work in very comfortably for long periods of time. You could easily do a long car trip as well. So far, I've been behind the wheel for about an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes or so. No problems with my back at all on this ride, but it does have a nice connected feel to it out on this winding mountain road we're on. 
I've read a few first drive reviews where they complain about the steering in the IA, claiming it's not quite as taut, not quite as good as the Mazda 2. I don't think it's quite as good as the previous generation Mazda 2, but honestly I don't have any experience in the current generation Mazda 2. It's not sold in this country. But compared to every other entry in this particular segment, I would actually say the IA is probably the best. The next closest would be the Ford Fiesta, depending on the version that you get. Of course, the Ford Fiesta uh, ST, the most powerful version, will be a little bit more communicative out on the road. They do some special tuning to that particular model for that mission. But I'm talking about the regular entry level versions in this segment. So this is definitely a little bit better in terms of steering feel than something like a Chevy Sonic or a Nissan Versa. Fuel economy has been absolutely excellent, even though I've been driving this only on these winding mountain roads. So no portion of my daily commute have I driven this car around. Really haven't done any highway travel either. It's mainly been mountain roads like this, and I've still been averaging 29.5 miles per gallon, which is absolutely excellent. I really don't have very many doubts that this will achieve its EPA fuel economy average, especially in the automatic transmission version. Mazda has been known for making some very aggressive vehicles in terms of fuel economy, and uh, that translates right to this particular Scion IA. The only price tags you really need to know are $15,700 and $16,800 because there is really only one option to choose from when you're buying your IA, and that is that manual transmission or the automatic transmission. That's in addition, of course, to the various colors that the vehicle comes in. The important thing there is that it makes pricing very easy and the dealers are encouraged to honor fixed price guarantees. We don't have any choices when it comes to the infotainment or navigation system, any choices when it comes to the engine or the wheels and tires. What you've been seeing is exactly what you get, again with the exception of the color choice and the transmission choice. That's very different than every other entry in this segment because even something like a Nissan Versa with which this logically does compete does have a wide variety of different trim levels and options to choose from. Obviously that makes base pricing comparisons a little bit tricky and the Nissan Versa starting just under $12,000 before destination will seem like an incredible deal, but you won't get anywhere near the same kind of feature content you find in this vehicle over there in the Nissan. Of course, the Nissan will cost you significantly less. It's just the question of, do you want the less content or the lower price tag? Now, personally, I would prefer the availability of a few different options because that's one of the reasons I like the Ford Fiesta is that you can get the compact car and then with Ford, you can option the snot out of it and you can get all sorts of options you don't find in any other entry in this segment. However, the Ford Fiesta similarly configured to this will be more expensive. It's right around $1,000 when you account for the added feature content that we get in this that we don't get in the Ford Fiesta. You'll also get better fuel economy in this than you will in the Fiesta unless you get the Fiesta with the three-cylinder turbo engine. Now, that three-cylinder turbo engine is a very interesting and attractive option in the Fiesta, except it does not come with an automatic transmission. It's manual only, and you're also limited to the number of options you can get in your Fiesta if you do get that attractive three-cylinder turbo. The Scion IA has easily the best interior in this segment, and that includes the infotainment and navigation system. Now, navigation is optional, but that 7-inch color touchscreen infotainment system is standard in all models of the IA. And that really sets this apart from the competition, not only because it's standard, but because it's also, by far, the best system in this segment. Now, Ford's Fiesta will likely get the new SYNC 3 package, and we won't know what that will look like until next year. That may take it one notch above this, but it's unlikely to be standard in the Fiesta, even when that does land. Compared to the Chevy Sonic, this will also be a little bit less expensive. Like the Ford Fiesta, however, there are performance versions of that Chevy, and you won't find that in the Scion lineup. Scion's really going for the very middle of the road, middle of the pack, average shopper in this segment. They're really not trying to go for that sporty buyer, even though this is one of the best handling vehicles in its segment. Lastly, comparisons to the Mazda 2 are, of course, inevitable, but very, very difficult since the Mazda 2 is not sold in the US at this time. So that means if you want a Mazda 2, this is the only version of that Mazda 2 you can find in this country. Now, I have driven the last generation Mazda 2 very recently. I think it is a little bit more direct. It does seem to be a little bit more engaging. It's kind of a moot point anyway, since we can't get that car in the United States. In other world markets where you can get the Mazda 2, you're probably not going to see any version of the Scion. In terms of overall ownership costs, the IA is likely to be one of the least expensive vehicles in this segment, not just because it's one of the best values in this segment, but because it gets the best fuel economy and it includes two years of standard scheduled maintenance. And that really will make this a little bit less expensive, especially in those first two years, than the competition. After those first two years, the very good fuel economy that we get out of this engine 
especially in the automatic, will make a big difference. Often the trickiest comparisons are the closest to home, and that's true for the Scion IA, because it will be sold very close to the Toyota Yaris. And the Yaris does not handle quite as well as this vehicle. I think it's a little bit more boring looking, the interior isn't quite as nice, the engine isn't quite as smooth, and the fuel economy is considerably better in the Scion IA as well. In addition to all of that, the infotainment system is definitely a notch above everything else that Toyota has at this end of the scale. In order to get this kind of feature functionality and this kind of aesthetic look, in your Toyota or Lexus system, you do have to step up to something like a Toyota Camry or a Lexus CT200H in the Lexus family in order to get this kind of infotainment and navigation system with the features that we're getting over here. Now something like a Toyota Corolla does offer some of these features at a slightly lower price point than the Camry, but the Camry integrates it overall a little bit better. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes and this has been the 2016 Scion IA. Go ahead and click that subscribe button and be updated on all of our latest videos. You can check out related videos on this particular channel, as well as the upcoming review on the new 2016 Scion IM, which is a four-door hatchback and not related to this at all. I'll see you next week.